Number one, conscience. Conscience. This is a personal authority. This is a personal restraint. This is a personal force. And in Romans chapter 2, we're looking at chapter 3, so we back up the previous chapter. Some very interesting words. Verse 11 says, there's no partiality with God. Subject is judgment here. Subject is divine judgment. God judges impartially. Somebody might say, well, wait a minute. If God is going to judge sinners, um, how can He judge them equally when some have the written law of God and they have violated it? Some don't even know about God, don't even know about Scripture, don't know anything about His written law. How can He judge them without partiality? If, if all of humans are sinful and all of humans are to be judged by God as sinful, how can He be impartial? Here's His answer. For all who have sinned without the law, meaning the written law, without having the Scripture itself, will perish without the law. They'll be judged and condemned even though they never had the written law. All who have sinned having the law will be judged by the law. How can that be? Listen. For when nations who do not have the written law do instinctively the things of the law, these not having the written law are a law to themselves. They show the law written in their hearts. That is a very important statement. Every human being has a sixth sense. I know you've heard that. That's some kind of clairvoyant notion in our culture. But I would like to offer a legitimate sixth sense that can match the other five. And it's not some kind of transcendental insight so that you can hear dead people talk. Okay, when I talk about a sixth sense, I'm talking about one that is stated here in this passage. Every human being has the law of God written in the heart. Every human being comes into this world knowing the difference between right and wrong. Do you remember when Adam and Eve were in the garden and Satan came along and said, go ahead and eat? God had said, don't eat of the tree of knowledge or you'll know right and wrong. Well, they disobeyed, they ate, and Genesis 3.22 says they knew right from wrong. Just as surely as Adam and Eve passed on their sinfulness to every generation, they also passed on the innate law of God. Just as they gave the five normal senses to their children and subsequently to all human beings, they also passed on the knowledge of right and wrong. This is embedded in what it means to be human. Everyone knows right from wrong. Divine morality is revealed in the heart. Some people, the Jews namely, and uh, others who have Scripture, but here it's making reference to the Jews to whom the Old Testament Scriptures were given, they have the law of God written. But what about those who don't? They have the law of God in their hearts to the degree that they know right from wrong. This is sufficient enough for God to make a judgment. In fact, back in Romans 1, verse 20, it says it's so sufficient that when they are judged for their immorality and judged for their lawlessness, they're without excuse. They have no excuse. I'm sure that plays out in the sim simple reality in life that how many people know the penal code? Very few people could ever come across the, with any kind of innate sort of knowledge of the penal code. But boy, whether they know anything in the penal code or not, whether they've come from another country and another nation, whether they're completely aliens from American culture, they know right from wrong. The law is written instinctively. That's the word here. The law is written in their hearts. Instinctively, they do the things written in the law. That's the universal reality. Animals have no law, animals have no morality, they have no self-consciousness, so they feel no guilt. They do what animals are supposed to do. People have a sixth sense, the ability to know right from wrong. Ethical sense is part of being human, the law in the heart. And then there is a mechanism that God has put into every human being that responds to how they react to that law, and that's also in verse 15. The conscience 
bearing witness and their thoughts alternately accusing or else excusing them. So how does this work? Everybody has the law of God written in the heart. Uh, That is a knowledge of right and wrong. That's part of being human. You know what is right. You know what is wrong. That's given by God. You have a mechanism. The mechanism is called conscience. Conscience is a device that God has given to every human being to react to that law. When you violate that law in the heart, you get accused by your conscience. We all talk about that. Somebody had a guilty conscience. Uh, There used to be uh, the tribal liars were discerned by putting fire on their tongue because they could tell if one was lying because there would be no saliva and it would burn their tongue. I mean, there's something, there's a mechanism in being human that creates fear, guilt, anxiety, dread, panic. Some people have such a screaming conscience torturing them that they take drugs, drink alcohol, um, engage in extreme adrenaline activities, or commit suicide. Conscience is there. The Greek word for conscience simply means self-knowledge. It's self-consciousness, which is only human. No other creation has it. When people do evil, their conscience goes into action. And the conscience is a warning device. Nobody likes pain, but everybody's grateful for it, right? Pain is a good thing. Why is it a good thing? Because it tells you you've got a problem. If you didn't feel pain, you would die without remedy. It's critical that you feel pain. That's a gift from God. Pain is a gift from God. It tells you you've got to stop doing what you're doing. You've got to get some help. You've got to remedy something. Conscience is pain in the moral area. Conscience screams at you, stop, you're going down a very dangerous path, stop, you need help, don't continue this behavior. It's a gift from God. It's a gift of restraint. It's God's first restraint built into human society to hold back and subdue sinners. This is the basic restraint that God has provided at the very individual level for every single human being initially living in the world has this built-in restraint. But, hey, we say about some people, they are unconscionable, right? We say this kind of behavior, this kind of action, this kind of crime, what does this guy have, no conscience? What? Do you mean to say this, this gift of God, this law written in the heart, this this mechanism that reacts to what we do with that law to either accuse us or excuse us, give us feelings of fear or well-being. You, you mean you can tamper with that? You bet. You bet you can tamper with that. Two ways you can tamper with it. Number one, you can tamper with the law of God about right and wrong written in the heart by crafting another law, twisting, perverting, reversing. As the Old Testament says, changing sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet, light for dark and dark for light, good for bad and bad for good. You can just reverse morality. You can create a new morality. You can create a new morality. And then what happens is the conscience is immediately confused because as that training goes on, and listen to me, it goes on in the culture, it goes on in the education systems, it goes on in the media, it dominates pop culture, and it's informing millions of young people who are coming up with a twisted morality that's set against the morality that God has put in their heart, and there's a shift going on. And what happens is the conscience is only a mechanism that responds to your belief system, and when your belief system is perverted, your conscience is totally confused. Then people do things that we say are unconscionable because conscience doesn't know when to convict and when to affirm. Another thing you can do, too, is you can make the work of the conscience illegitimate. You can say you shouldn't feel guilty. You shouldn't feel fearful. You're who you are. You need to be proud about who you are. This is you. This is how you live. You do your own thing. Nobody can tell you what to do. You shouldn't feel guilt. Guilt is wrong. There are books, psychological books, lots of them that say guilt is bad. Guilt is bad. Certain sins are now good. And if you speak against those sins, you're bad. Everything gets reversed. And then we play games 
with a confused conscience by delegitimizing guilt, which delegitimizes fear and anxiety, which is the first level of restraint. It goes on all the time. So there is going to be on the part of sinners, individually and collectively, a massive effort to change the law of God written in the heart that every person knows, twist it, pervert it, reverse it, make bad things good and good things bad, and then a massive effort to delegitimize guilt, fear, and anxiety on the basis that you're who you are, you have a right to be who you are, think what you want, do what you want, don't let anybody tell you different. Now you've got essentially you've just turned loose a sinner without personal restraint. Destroy the moral law of God built into the soul of every individual. See the conscience as illegitimate, and you've killed the first restraint. 